Hi, um, this is a very brief overview of Crossref's funding data project. Um, I've got about 15 minutes worth of slides and then we'll leave plenty of time for questions at the end. So please, if you think of any questions as we go along, feel free to type them into the chat box and I'll pick those up at the end. It's been mentioned in the chat part of GoToWebinar, but we are recording today's session and we'll also be circulating the slides after so that you can share them with colleagues. So just very quickly, I expect most of the people on the call are Crossref members, but for anyone who isn't, um, this is kind of our elevator pitch for what Crossref does. I am a product manager, my name is Kirsty Meddings, I work in our Oxford office um, and I run the funding data project in amongst other things. So what I'm going to cover today is how we are going about collecting standardized funding acknowledgements from published content and making this metadata easily available to anyone, but particularly to the funders themselves. Funders are increasingly requiring researchers to make publications that result from their funding openly available. And the obvious mandates that I think most people have heard about are the US federal agencies, the European Commission's Horizon 2020 funding program, and here in the UK, the Research Councils and Higher Education Funding Body. But there's a growing group all the time who are um, updating their policies and stipulating OA publication. And to ensure that there is compliance, funders want to track the publications that result from the research that they've funded. And authors have always traditionally included the funding information in their acknowledgement sections. But the Crossref Funding Data Project is all about pulling that information out of the article and making it a standard part of article metadata so that it can be collated and analyzed. In order to do this, when we first started thinking about this about five or six years ago, we had to tackle the issue of funder names. So as the authors are entering funding information as freeform text in acknowledgements, um, there are obviously going to be a lot of inconsistencies. People use abbreviations, they use alternative names, or it could be simply a case of misspelling something. So it becomes very hard to then aggregate that data, to match it all up, to make sure that you're getting an accurate view of all the publications that are citing a single funding source. And without this uniformity of naming, you get a situation where nobody involved can really make enough sense of the data to do anything with it, not the funding bodies, the publishers, or the institutions. So that's why we decided to pull that into part the standard cross-ref metadata that publishers give to us so that it can be more effectively used on a large scale. So at the heart of the project is um, the Open Funder Registry, which used to be called the Fundref Registry. The project was called Fundref. We've renamed it as Funding Data and the Funder Registry. And when we started with funding data about four years ago, we had a list of about 4,000 international funder names. The last update that we put up, which was about three weeks ago, we had over 14,000 funder names. So it contains not just funder names, the funder registry, it's an RDF file that's freely available to anyone to download. It contains quite a bit of metadata about the funders. So a funder name, it contains alternate names and acronyms, and critically, it contains a unique funder ID for each organization. It's a growing list, it's evolved over time. Um, it's growing more slowly now than it was at the start, as we think we're probably approaching critical mass. Um, we are adding new funders on about a monthly basis either funders that have approached us or funders that we, the team who curate the, the um, registry have researched and found out about. The registry can also track relationships between funders. So if there are cha name changes or mergers, um, there's vocabulary in the registry that says this is now known as and this was previously known as. So there's a lot of information in there. And it's this list of funders that publishers and their vendor partners use to make sure that the canonical name of the funder is contained in the metadata. Um, replacing the author's own interpretation of that name. So the steps that a publisher needs to take in order to collect and deposit funding data with Crossref are as follows. You need to collect funding data and there are two ways you can do this um, and the publishers who are currently sending us funding data um, tend to do one or the other or in fact a combination of both. So you can ask for the funding data from authors on submission. And your submission system vendor is likely to be able to help with this. We've worked very closely with all the major submission system vendors um, from an 
early on in the project to make sure that they have funding data sections that can be switched on um, for a publisher or a journal as needed. So do have a word with them. and They should make that very easy to switch on the funding data section. Or others have chosen to actually extract the funder names and grant numbers directly from the acknowledgements at some point during the production or typesetting process. However you gather the names, what we have found over the past few years is that an element of QA is absolutely critical, both with authors submitting information, which they may not necessarily get exactly right, or from anything that's been machine extracted. Common problems can be concatenations of, of funder names or splitting of funder names, um, and also being accurate on which institution you're talking about. There are national cancer, cancer institutes, for example, in a number of countries, um, and there are different entries with the country labelled in the funder registry, so important to take those things into account. In most cases, you should be able to match the funder name to the funder ID in the Open Funder Registry. And then there are three pieces of metadata that need to be deposited with Crossref. The funder name, the funder ID, and any grant numbers that you have from the acknowledgements too. Grant numbers are optional, but we do encourage you to deposit them. A little asterisk, just to go back up there, um, something we have found experimenting with um, publisher partners is that <clears throat> the clearer the instructions you can give authors, um, the better. They do need directing, um, being told what it is that you need from them so that they fill in the correct, um, the correct fields. And the way that most of the submission system vendors have tried to help authors get to the correct funder name is by integrating the Open Funder Registry. So it sits behind their systems and it works in different ways. Some use sort of drop down navigations, others as you type the names start to appear. So it guides the author to pick the correct name for their organisation. So once that information has been deposited at Crossref, we have the DOI of the piece of content tied to the funding source and the award number. And what that means then is that each of these pieces of information is discoverable via any of the other. So it becomes suddenly a really useful resource. This means that publishers, funders, and any interested party, in fact, can search on it. You can either do that through our funding data search, which is the screen I'm showing at the moment, or you can do it through one of our query APIs. So funding data search here is a very specific interface that we've built for looking up funding bodies and seeing papers that have resulted from their grants. Of course, there are ways to look up um, any of the metadata in the Crossref database, but that's in Crossref metadata search, which is a slightly different take on this interface. But just to show you how funding data search works, as you start to type, it directs the users to names that funding names that could match what they're looking for. As I said, we held acronyms in the database, so typing in NSF, I as I have done here, brings up all of the funders that have NSF as a possible acronym. We've also listed the countries, as I mentioned before, um, that's really important, helping the researcher pick the correct organisation. <clears throat> and then when you click on a funder, and I've changed examples here, um, but this search is for the Wellcome Trust, you then see um, all the papers returned that cite the Wellcome Trust as a funder. And in our interface, you can do some filtering over here on the left by date, um, publication, content type, and so on and so forth. The funding data search allows you to download this data as a CSV, but that does have limitations. Once you get above a certain number, it just doesn't scale. Um, so that's really only for funders with just handfuls of results. If you want to get data in any that's, sorry, that's an example of the CSV file um, and the information it gives you. But if you want to get bigger amounts of data, you're far better off using our API. Our API is freely available to anyone. Um, anyone can query it for any of the data that Crossref holds, but you can specifically query it for funding data. So they're not very pretty to look at API queries, but here I have looked, asked for all records with funding information and this screenshot's a little bit out of date, so that num is, number's much bigger now. Then all DOIs that cite the National Science Foundation as a funder, and then I can actually pull the metadata back for all of those NSF um, publications. So we think this, for the larger funders who are going to have a lot of records that cite them, um, is absolutely the route that you can come to get bulk loads of data um, in machine-readable format. 
But our API has also allowed third-party systems to make use of this funding data and build on top of it. And one of the main systems that's doing that at the moment is Chorus, which some of you may have heard of. Um, <clears throat> this is an initiative set up um, by publishers to use cross-ref funding data to provide US federal agencies with reports and dashboards that show how much content is compliant with a particular funder's OA policy. So Chorus have their own interface and their own set of systems, but it's all powered by the funding data through the Crossref API. Another um, partner that's using our interface is Share. Um, this is the ARLs project, which um, it's called Share Notify, generates a feed of what they're calling research release events that subscribers can use to track the outcomes, outputs, and impacts of specific research projects. So a funder could subscribe to be notified when they're cited in the metadata of an article, or a preprint or a data set, for example. And Share Notify takes a feed of cross-ref metadata from our API to populate their database along, alongside other sources. Obviously, I'm talking a lot about making data available to funders, but perhaps an another way to look at it from the point of view of publisher is to make life easier for the researchers who are being mandated by these funders. And these are the steps that you can take to help those researchers, your authors. Depositing funding data with us so that funders can locate and record those published outcomes, and making sure that that data, metadata, is of as good a quality as possible. You are able, when you deposit funding information, to deposit funder names without funder IDs if you can't find that particular funder in the registry. Um, we encourage you to deposit the names even if you don't have an ID for two reasons. One is that we will skim off those names that come into us without IDs and they form a pool from which we look for funders that we can add to the registry. But also, in two of our systems, in um, our metadata search, Crossref metadata search and in the crossmark display box where funding is listed, we will display those names without IDs. So to make sure you've got a full record in, in those user interfaces, do deposit all the funder names. But it's important to note that without a funder ID, we can't do any of that collation or aggregation. So the results that appear from funding data search are only returning records where the funder ID is present. So the funder ID is absolutely critical, but do please deposit the full data set if you can't find a funder ID for a particular funder. As I mentioned before, clear instructions are really important. Um, guidance on how to correctly cite those funders. Some of the things that we've seen is uh, researchers being confused between the actual funder name and the acronym of the project that they're working on at any particular time. So any help that you can give on making sure that they cite the funder rather than a particular project is helpful and encourage them to include grant numbers. Something just to mention um, before we come to a close, uh, Crossref is soon going to be encouraging members to register DOIs on acceptance. A lot of our members are already doing this when they make the um, accepted manuscript available at the point that it's accepted, but we also want to make it possible for all publishers to do this, whether or not they actually make the accepted manuscript available online. So the metadata can come to Crossref even if there's not an article for that to follow through to. A number of reasons for this, but partly to give funders more timely notice of publications, so funders can find out at the point of acceptance that their research has been published in this particular article, even if the AM isn't actually up yet. And it'll also allow repositories to receive alerts that will notify them of acceptance, and that in turn can trigger deposit into an institutional repository or similar. Um, this is coming very soon. It's not quite ready yet, but expect to see that uh, later this year. So coming in nicely at 15 minutes, just to summarize, uh, Crossref's metadata database is the only place uh, in our industry at the moment where you can get standardized funding acknowledgement metadata from publications. Accuracy of this funding metadata is really important. That bit where you match a funder name to the funder ID from the funder registry makes it all come together. So whichever method you choose to collect the funder names, um, as much as you can do to make sure that it's correctly matched with a funder ID from the registry is really important. Through our API, we've got an increasing number of organizations that pull on this funding data to identify content and check for compliance. And our call to action really is to get involved. If you're not already depositing funding data from your publications, please do. 
um, make it available, make it accurate, and we will help you to make it transparent and distributed. So we do have time for questions. Those are my contact details. If you should think of anything after today's call, please feel free to drop me a line. Here's a question um, from somebody who's already depositing, saying you have a good hit rate with our authors, including funders and grant numbers. Is there a spreadsheet or more visually pleasing list we can recommend for lookup by admin and authors, um, other than the RDF file? Yes, I should have actually mentioned that. Um, my apologies for the oversight. The funder registry is available to download as a um, CSV file, as well as the RDF. The CSV doesn't contain nearly as much of the metadata as the RDF, but it does contain the list of funder names and funder IDs. And if you follow the link here to Funding Data web, web page on our website, that will link you out to the RDF registry, which we hold in a GitHub repository with full version history, and from that page there's a link to the CSV download of the file. And the other way to look up funders, of course, is to use our Funding Data Search. You can come along to that interface. Um, that's not its exact intention, but the functionality works in such a way that if you're looking for a funder, um, you can find it through that, and you'll find the funder ID is actually appended to the URL when you hit for search results. I'm going to give a few more minutes because the last webinar I did, I found out afterwards that someone was typing when I um, when I said goodbye. So I'll just be a little less hasty today. Question about countries associated with a funder and whether that's included in the API because it's not in this particular person's submission system. I believe it is. It should be. Um, let me absolutely double check that. But yes, it should be. Let me check that and get back to you. I've, I've made a note of who you are because um, I'd quite like to know which submission system that is too. So um, I will follow up on that afterwards. But my immediate response is that yes, it is. Any other questions from anybody? Okay, well I won't keep you any longer other than say thank you very much. As I said, we'll circulate both the slides and the recording if it's worked. Um, and do feel free to drop me a line at any point if you think of questions further down the line or indeed if you need any help in getting set up to deposit funding data. Thank you very much. Goodbye.